Hello and welcome. We saw in the previous course the principles of predictive modeling in general through the simple example of linear regression. The purpose of a model is the simplification of reality and of a predictive model to give us a probability, the probability of a measure or the probability of occurrence of an event. We have also learned that the conception of these models is based on measures of distances. Even for the most sophisticated models that we will see later, everything we do is to measure distances. The principle is quite simple. If we have two known observations, A and B, and a third unknown observation, C, subject to classification. If C is closer to A, I will conclude that it probably belongs to the same class as A. If C is closer to B, I will conclude that it probably belongs to the same class as B. This is why we will vectorize our space and use matrix computing in order to facilitate these distance measurements. Each observation becomes a vector and all observations become a matrix which greatly facilitates these distance measurements. Hence the importance of linear algebra and matrix calculus in the study of AI. For decades and even today we have designed static models, meaning that the model, once done, its parameters no longer change. The universe, however, is changing, and the correlations that have once led to the model are evolving. A model will therefore become obsolete over time. Until now, when the predictability of a model is no longer acceptable, the only solution was to redo another model. This involves a new database and a new modeling process with the associated cost in time and labor. We therefore tried to envision a way for the model to evolve on its own, meaning that the parameters of the model would be automatically recalculated when new observations are added. This presents, however, a major difficulty. How would we avoid overfitting without the manual intervention and judgment of a modeler? The solution that has been found is based on the concept of cross-validation and regularization, which define machine learning. Cross-validation is based on the validation principle we have seen previously, which is to test our model on a sample that was not used to make it. The desire to automate, however, takes us to a slightly different approach. A test sample of 20% of our work base is extracted randomly. A model is built on the learning sample that is the remaining 80% and tested on the test sample. We then go back to our original work base and start again with another random test sample that will necessarily differ and therefore we will also get a different model. This step will be repeated 5 to 10 times. In the end, we will have 10 different models tested on 10 random test samples. Comparing the results obtained on the variety of samples helps controlling the risk of overfitting and to confirming the validity of the chosen modeling method. Regularization is more complex. It involves penalizing the optimization of the cost function. We learned at the beginning of the previous course that the cost function of a linear regression is minimizing the sum of distances between each observation and the line representing our model. If the cost function 
in this case the minimization of distances, is to be pushed too far, we run the risk of overfitting. That is why we will voluntarily penalize the cost function so that it is never perfect. This regularization is therefore an additional mathematical dimension that allows to control the recalculation of the parameters of the model. This regularization is itself a function whose parameters are called hyperparameters. In the context of machine learning, the modeler's task is now not to calculate parameters, but to choose and define the hyperparameters so that the model is never perfect and stays constantly in the constrained space between precision and recall and between underfitting and overfitting. As we have seen previously, the purpose of machine learning is the evolution of the model with the addition of new observations without the intervention of a modeler. This results in a considerable gain in efficiency, time and accuracy over time. Let's sum up the world of machine learning with this image. We have unsupervised models with their use in the field of segmentation. Then we have supervised models, that is, we have a truth, a reference observed in the past. In supervised models, we find classification models, the prediction of a class, and regression models, the prediction of a dimension. We also see a third family of models that we have not yet talked about, which are the models of reinforcement learning. These models are mainly used in the fields of games and robotics. It consists of a learning process based on punishment and reward. If my cost function is, for example, to optimize a number of points, I will penalize the algorithm for any bad action by taking points from it and rewarding it for any good action by adding points. The algorithm will very quickly learn to promote good actions and avoid bad ones. Now, let's look at the main algorithms that we can encounter. This table shows the same now well-known taxonomy of supervised or unsupervised models of regressions or classifications. Within supervised regression models, we will find again linear regressions, which we have seen previously, very often used, simple, but not to be underestimated. We also find logistic regression. Logistic regression has been, and still is, the workhorse of financial and banking modeling. Although this is a regression, it is often used as a binary classification. Indeed, it is used only when the prediction has only two possible values, good or bad, true or false, etc. Two possibilities represented by numbers 0 and 1. In this case, it is impossible to use a line, infinite by essence, at the risk of having more true than true and more false than false, which doesn't make any sense. So we found a mathematical way to constrain the regression line between the two limit values and thus we get this characteristic sigmoid. We use for that the natural logarithm of the probability, hence the name of logistic regression. In the classification category, the simplest algorithm is the KNN for K nearest neighbors. The attribution of a new observation to a class is decided according to the labels of its closest neighbors. K being a variable, we will decide if we take the three, four or five closest neighbors. If KNN is the simplest, decision trees are the most popular. Indeed, they are easy to explain. We start from the general population which we divide gradually according to variables and separation threshold. 
This creates branches, parents and children. Terminal nodes are called leaves, and the purpose of the algorithm is to take and get the purest population within a leaf. This will allow us to predict the likelihood of belonging to a class based on a series of conditions that are easy to explain. More sophisticated and complex is Support Vector Machine or SVM. This algorithm consists in finding the optimal dividing line between two populations. It does it by finding the line that offers the widest space between the two populations to be separated. Even more complex are neural networks. These are composed of neurons arranged in layers. The idea is to reproduce the functioning of the human brain with the transmission of a signal from neuron to neuron. There is an input layer and an exit layer between which are several hidden layers. Beyond five hidden layers, we speak of deep neural network and deep learning. Therefore, deep learning is a machine learning method that relies on the use of neural networks with more than five hidden layers, so more than seven layers in total. The recurring question is always that of which model to use and how to choose the best possible modeling algorithm. In the early 2000s, a group of researchers asked themselves, why only look for the most effective decision tree? Couldn't we randomly create several mediocre decision trees, make them vote, and take the result of the majority. And this works wonderfully well. Because there are several trees, it was called a forest. And because the trees are created randomly, it was called a random forest. The principle extended beyond the decision trees. And today, it is not uncommon to use several algorithms at the same time in what is called an ensemble and take the result of the majority. It certainly works, but it is still very demanding in computational capacity. In the category of unsupervised algorithm, most often used for segmentation purpose, the best known is k-means, which uses the measure of average distances based on centroid positioned at random at the beginning then repositioned according to the optimization of the cost function that aims at minimizing the distance between observation of the same segment and maximizing the distance between centroids. Let's watch an animation that illustrates the separation of a population into four segments. The four centroids are initially defined at random. Distances with each observation are calculated. The cost function will then change the position of the centroids in order to optimize distances within the segment and between segments. This results in four segments that are as homogeneous as possible and as separated as possible. Easy. What we should remember is that Machine learning is a voluntary penalization of our cost function in order to allow an automatic recalculation of the parameters of a model after adding new observations while avoiding overfitting. That there are many modeling algorithms from which we will have to choose or not if we decide to use them altogether. In the next course, we will complete our journey from human decision making to statistics and predictive modeling, and we will finally reach its culmination with artificial intelligence. See you soon.